actually we are considered arm for the oil industry. However, we are a, a division out of the full organization, which is the governmental organization actually. The, the title of my talk is in a deactivation, patterns of catalyst use of multiple reactor unit. And as we have noticed, working the catalysis, not many papers was presented in the deactivation. So I hope this one will come to give us some idea about the, 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 the experimental work that we conducted at the Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research. Uh, I will try to follow up uh, this outline, a uh, little bit introduction and background in order to, to make things go to the right direction. Then some of the motivations and objectives of the work experimental and methodology. We try to highlight more in the results and discussion, some conclusion and summary. Uh, also, we will try to, to cover some of the, uh, the, the future work that's going to be conducted in the, in the, the, the same area. Then the, at the end of the lecture, the floor will be open for, for remarks and uh, uh, questions. Uh, some challenges facing the refinery, uh, especially with the, the, the trend of the heavy oil, is uh, the decrease the, the ability of the light crude, uh, also the decline in demand, the demand for the fuel oil. At the same time, the demand for the middle distillate is increasing. Uh, the strength in the environmental regulation is getting more, uh, more uh, stringent for the refinery. At the same time, the, the Reduction in the, in, the, in the waste and the utilization of the waste is one of the uh, extra challenge actually to the refinery facing. Uh, this figure, this figure to the left shows the trend on the quality of the crude, and as we can see, uh, crude is getting heavier, uh, with uh, higher in sulfur and lower in NPI. Um, at the same time, the demand for the distribution is increasing in order to, uh, to fulfill the demand, uh, upgradings and uh, uh, high conversion refinery is needed. And also we have to keep in mind the heavier crude uh, and also will imply high, high metal content like vanadium and nickel, asphaltene, corruption carbon, and in particular the, the asphaltenic will be more and the quality of asphaltene going to be even different which make really a challenge on the refining such a crude. Uh, heavy crudes also heading Kuwaiti, uh, Kuwaiti also, we are planning We are planning to produce ultra heavy crude, which can go around to 13 to 14 API. It might not be as heavy as in Canada. However, this is the heaviest that, the heaviest one that we're going to be heading by, by year 2010. Uh, number of technologies have been proven in the last 40 years for residue upgrading. Among those is carbon rejection and hydrogen addition. Uh, hydrogen addition is, uh, root is, has advantages, many advantages actually over the carbon rejection with regard to the quality of the distillate and lower in aromatic uh, and higher stability. Uh, many, uh, actually, as I mentioned, many technologies available. However, in general, the choice choice of, uh, of these uh, available technologies vary between the options on the technical flexibility and economic considerations. Uh, since my talk will be in the area of uh, uh, the, the, the hydrogen addition, I would like to highlight here that the fixed bit is, is, is among the, 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 the most predominant technology used in the area of, of uh, conversion and atmospheric residue sulfurization which uh, we abbreviated by ARDS, is one of the processes uh, from, for hydrogen addition. I would like to stop here a little bit and try to highlight a few things, because this, uh, I think, the key, the, key, the key slide for the rest of my talk. Uh, weight refineries uh, are processing around 0.2 million barrels per day of, of residue, and this amount is going to be doubled by year 2010. Uh, Kuwait, the uh, state of Kuwait is planning to have one of the largest refinery, which is going to be around 6,050 barrels a day by year to, to 2010. 
So the demand and the increase in the need for, for atmospheric risk diversion is, is increasing actually in Kuwait. Uh, one of the characteristic of the, this process that uh, multiple reactors normally use and each reactor loaded with different catalysts, so we might end up with five to six catalysts, which is the system, a catalyst system, and, and this is, of course, came from the complexity of the feed. The feed is normally is an atmospheric residue with a high amount of metal, corrosion, carbon, sulfur, and asphaltene. So uh, each catalyst actually will be dedicated to remove certain heteroatoms. And uh, the main objectives of, of ARDS process actually is to produce, in Kuwait in particular, to produce low sulfur fuel oil and also to produce some other feedstock which can be used for downstream processes like FCC and also can be used for delayed cooking. Uh, due to the importance of ARDS process, the Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research realized the importance and a program actually set with the Kuwait National Petroleum Company along with international collaboration from Japan in order to have a program uh, which is going to be uh, tackle different issues related to atmospheric desulfurization. This program actually started 10 years before and is still ongoing and we have so many activities on it. The, the lecture that I will be talking about is more or less is one of the elements of that program. And in order to fulfill the program, collaboration uh, was made between ISAR and Japan the Cooperation Center as a funding agency. And a technical partner, we have Kuwait National Petroleum Company, and we have Japanese company also, Japan Energy, and the Dimitsu Kosan Company. So the program was established and work was still ongoing, and this is what I'm going to talk is part of the work that we conduct. One of the important issues with regard to the atmospheric residue desulfurization is the deactivation of the catalyst. As I mentioned earlier, due to the complexity of the feedstock, the catalyst life, no matter how much they design a new catalyst, it never go more than 13 or 14 months. So it can, it can be between 10 to 14 months, depending on the catalyst supplier and the design of the catalyst. One of the phenomena uh, which is really known in the literature is the S-shape for the deactivation pattern. And the S-shape is, uh, is actually uh, giving us an idea about the, the deactivation of, of the ARDS catalyst throughout the, the, the life, the life is. And this, uh, this uh, phenomena, or this uh, figure actually shows three different phases. The first one, which is uh, for the start of run, and then we have middle of run, and then we have end of run. Uh, it, it was proven, and actually a lot of uh, research was conducted with regard to the, the, this, this type of phenomena and the, 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 the reasons of, of having this type of deactivation. And it was found that the initial Initial deactivation actually is due to cork, and then, then we have the middle of, of, of run is mainly due to the metal because of the accumulation of the metal, then at the end is, is basically because of the metal. And, and as a general practice in the commercial ARDS unit at the refinery, they have to increase the temperature in order to compensate for the deactivation of the catalyst. As I indicated, uh, three stages. The first stage is, is attributed to the cork, cork deposition, and the second one is because of the vanadium and metal, which is, uh, starts filling the pores and uh, blocking the active sites, and then the final stage with uh, rapid deactivation, and the catalyst is no longer active, so the catalyst has to be discharged, and uh, a new catalyst has to be loaded. This is a general practice in the refinery. Information about activity, selectivity, and the deactivation behavior of individual catalysts used in the atmospheric residue desulfurization are very important. Uh, very important due to the factors in order to try to prolong the life of the catalyst, also to increase the stream efficiency, and also increasing the, uh, the, the profit and economics of, of, the, of, the, of the process. Some of the major objectives of this study is to, to present, uh, to do a comparative study on the deactivation behavior of three that type of, of 
catalyst, industrial catalyst, were actually used in the commercial unit. Uh, these catalysts, uh, the, the three catalysts are uh, as follows. The first one is, is mainly dedicated for, for metal removal, which is only molybdenum oxide and alumina. Then the second one is nickel molybdenum, which is mainly dedicated for desulfurization or HDS. And the last one is nickel molybdenum phosphorus and alumina, which is mainly dedicated for hydrogen for desulfurization and actually denitrogenation, uh, with higher hydrocrackability compared to other two. Uh, these three catalysts, as I mentioned, are a typical catalysts used in the Kuwaiti refinery, uh, and, uh, the first and second and the third reactors in the ARDS process. The primary objective of the study was to contribute to the understanding the relationship between the catalyst type and the deactivation patterns, and also to illustrate and to get information about the deactivation due to coke and, and the, the, the the three catalysts, as well as of the metal deposition and uh, the distribution of the metal uh, throughout these catalysts. The feedstock used in, in this study is, is typically as atmospheric residue sulfurization, which is uh, it's, uh, obtained from Kuwait export crude, and the major characteristic is here API 12 and sulfur around 4.3 for ration carbon around 12 and 3.8 SLT, total metal around 88 ppm. This is a typical uh, structure of the asphaltinic uh, part of the Kuwait uh, atmospheric residue that uh, uh, found from, from our laboratories. The, the catalysts used in the study are three catalysts. The first one is dedicated for HDM, as I mentioned. The second one, HDS, and the third one, HDS, HDN. And for simplicity and abbreviation, I will be indicated for the first one as catalyst A, the second one as catalyst B, the third one as catalyst C. And as we can see from, from this table, catalyst A is more dedicated for metal, so it uh, possesses high, uh, set high uh, uh, pore diameter, large pore diameter. The metal loading is low. When we go to the second catalyst, the metal loading is medium and the core diameter is, is medium. When we go to the last one, since it is more dedicated for hydro, hydro, dehydrogenation and hydrocarbability, hydrocracking, it has small core diameter. However, the metal content is much higher compared to the other two. The hydro treating test was conducted using one of the pilot plants available at, at the, 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 the Toronto Research Center and the operating condition was selected in a similar manner for the commercial unit. Uh, the test was conducted for, uh, for, for around 120 hours where the catalyst was loaded and uh, the operating condition was uh, operated according to standard procedure. After, after the completion of the test, the catalyst, the catalyst was removed and then washed with toluene to remove all, all the uh, oil contaminated oil and subjected for different characterization. These are some of the techniques that we uh, used uh, in order to investigate on the catalyst uh, the activation for the three catalyst, surface area, pore size distribution, uh, temperature program oxidation, and uh, elemental chemical analysis, uh, metal, metal carbon sulfur distribution using electron probe micro, micro analysis, and also solid state NMR in order to get information about the coke aromaticity and all that as we're going to see it. As I mentioned earlier, one of the important uh, aspects of, of uh, the deactivation is the, the, the asphaltine, which is available in the, in the, the residual oil. And asphaltine, uh, it varies, the quantity is varied from one crude to other. And one important thing also, not only the quantity, the quality of the asphaltine, and we can, we can call it, uh, it's like a cholesterol for the catalyst, like in the human body, it's like uh, it's something that, some bad things that we don't like, and it's the same thing with regard to the catalyst. So asphaltine characterization is one of the important, actually, parameters that uh, give us information, and it's very related to the application. In residual abitrating, the fact is the asphaltine to be considered as coke precursors because they are the largest, most aromatic, and least reactive component of the feedstock. 
this is uh, the, shape, the, the model that has been uh, proposed by Spike and, and we uh, with regard to the asphaltene, which basically, basically we have the core with the asphaltene is in the middle, which is the, the aromatic, and then it's surrounded with the resin, and then aromatics and the saturate. And during the hydrotreating, the, the, the saturate and, and the, the resin, the saturate and the, uh, the oil itself, the resins, part of the resin will be hydrotreated. The remaining part will be the more aromatic, uh, which, is, which is the asphaltene part, the more aromatic. Uh, the, the asphalt tea obtained from Kuwait, from, from Kuwait atmospheric residue was characterized uh, in order to see the different uh, characteristics. Uh, for example, hydrogen to carbon ratio, which is around 1.64. Uh, this is the amount of asphalt tea in the original feed. And aromaticity, around 0.5. And then degree of alkali substitution is around 0.38. And degree of condensation, 0.48. These are some of the important parameters uh, that uh, was uh, obtained from NMR. As I indicated earlier, uh, uh, the activation in the, in the ARDS or in general uh, token, it goes either to coke formation, and the first uh, part, which will be about coke, I will try to talk about it. The, the uh, catalyst, uh, the spin catalysts were characterized using element analysis, and the amount of carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, and nitrogen were, were uh, obtained, and the ratio also were obtained. So the sulfur and nitrogen content of the three tetras actually uh, showed, the results showed they are different, and they are in the disorder, A, B, C, and among the three catalysts is the last catalyst, the C shows a higher active, uh, which, which has a high active metal loading, uh, which has a higher tendency to absorb and uh, accumulate nitrogen than other two types of catalysts. And also, we found uh, that around 20% of carbon was deposited in the three catalysts, more or less, a range of 50 to 20% within the 120 hours. The amount of carbon accumulated that increased in the following sequence, the catalyst B is less than catalyst A and then catalyst C. So basically, the amount of uh, the catalyst, the amount of carbon coke, the coke deposition on the, on the catalyst A is, is less, and this is because of uh, it's more. And, uh, we also found that hydrogen to carbon ratio deposit is, uh, is around about 0.6, and this value actually is in agreement with what we found in the literature. Uh, I have to uh, I think indicate here again that those catalysts actually. Uh, they are varied with regard to their characteristic. With regard to the active metal content, catalyst C is more than catalyst B and catalyst A. With regard to hydrogenation function, catalyst C is more catalyst B than catalyst A. The pore size is catalyst A is more than catalyst B compared to catalyst C. Acidity, uh, catalyst C is higher than catalyst uh, B and catalyst A. Uh, coke deposit in the spent catalyst during hydro processing of residual oil has been classified into two, actually two types. The first, uh, the first two types of coke are either called soft coke, which is uh, which has a characterized by high hydrogen to carbon ratio and uh, solubility and so, uh, solubility in organic solvent in toluene or tetrahydrofurane, and then and, and uh, appears at low oxidation temperature, 50 to 350. Uh, the complex insoluble fraction of coke is usually called the hard coke, which is the second type of, of, of coke available. And uh, in our, in the, as a part of our study, we also investigated that using temperature program oxidation. And we found two types of coke, soft and refractory. Uh, one of the coke is, which is around uh, 325, and the other fraction deposit of the surface coke, which is refractory. And it Removal required at higher temperature, which called the, uh, the, the hard coke. And the coke found to the, and all the three catalysts were grown to be the surface as a surface. This is the ratio of surface to the soft coke with regard to different catalysts, keeping into mind the available surface area. And as we can see, the higher one is, is, is 
and we are HDA inspectors. Some of the important uh, results from TPO, they try terms such as nitrogen and sulfide were present in the safe scope, but not in the soft scope. The active metal sulfide phase was not covered with foam. Nitrogen compounds present in the teeth were strongly absorbed in the active metal sulfide side and support. Nitrogen poisoning of metal side was observed to be low in the case of the HDM, but very high in the case of HDS HDM, which is the higher hydrogenation and higher hydrogen. Uh, in order to further uh, obtain information about the uh, aromatic aromaticity of the pop, the NMR was used. Uh, this figure shows the aromaticity of the pop for different catalysts, A, B, C, and this one, the aromaticity in the original uh, uh, S15 in the feed. And as we found here, the lowest aromaticity was found in the catalyst T. And this is actually is not a surprise since the catalyst C has a higher hydrogenation activity. Uh, structural features of coke, uh, the degree of condensation and degree of alkali substitution. And similarly, we found that the, uh, these values are lower in the case of catalyst C and even lower than the uh, original S15. Original S15. Uh, a ratio of tertiary to quartile aromatic, the pop also found uh, to be higher in the case of, of catalyst C. On the all three testes catalyst, as a result of the activation and tracking, quartile and aromatic carbon was hydrogenated to tertiary. Aromatic carbon leading to increase in the carbon, aromatic carbon quartile ratio, even lower than the, the, the amount in the S15, original S15. There were remarkably high hydrogenation activity of the HDS, HD, and catalyst because not only the quartile aromatic carbon could be converted to tertiary, but also aromatic rings in the, uh, the copper poison. Uh, as I indicated earlier, uh, we found that the, the, parameter, the three parameters, uh, aromaticity, degree of condensation, and the degree of alkylation, were much lower in the case of the, the catalyst C. And as I, I, as I mentioned, due to the fact that the catalyst C has higher hydrogenation activity. Uh, as I indicated earlier that the, uh, the activation in the uh, catalyst, uh, ARD catalyst, is not, it's one of, one of them is course uh, related to coke and the other one is to the metal deposition. And as a part of, of our investigation, we try to get information with regard to that. This figure shows the amount of metal deposited as a time on stream in, in the HDM catalyst, which is the catalyst A. This one is part of a previous study that we, we, we obtained. And uh, within 120 hours, around 1.92% around, uh, uh, of were deposited, carbon were deposited. Uh, the analysis of the metal, uh, metal content of the three spent catalysts indicated that uh, more or less similar amount of, of carbon were deposited and at the same time were, uh, the spent catalysts were subjected, subjected to uh, surface area and core volume in order to see the loss and as the results clearly indicate here, the loss in the, in the surface area, and core volume and average core diameter as much lower or much higher in the case of catalyst C and this is expected also due to the fact that catalyst C is, uh, has lower pore size distribution compared to the R2. Uh, one of the important uh, aspects of the, the metal with regard to the activation is to, to, to get some information about metal profile and the extent of the activation of the residual oil by coke and metal deposits to a large extent on the, on the location of, of the deposits within the, the catalyst beds. If the deposits are concentrated near the outer surface, outer edge, they can lead to a poor mouth plugging and result in a rapid deactivation of the catalyst. On the other hand, a uniform distribution uh, throughout the fillets uh, cross section will not reduce the catalyst activity. So we tried to to illustrate some of the uh, 
temperature, I would call it the metal profile of the platinum nickel and vanadium. This is uh, the nickel distribution uh, in the catalyst A and catalyst B. And as we can see that uh, the nickel is distributed uniformly along the pellet of the, the catalyst. When we go to the vanadium, uh, this is in particular for the catalyst A and catalyst B. Uh, we can see that in the, in the case of the catalyst uh, A, which is mainly dedicated for the methylation, the, the, uh, the vanadium is distributed not in, uh, uniformly. However, for, uh, for catalyst B, the vanadium is, is more concentrated in the edge of, 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 of the catalyst. And this actually can be explained in a way that uh, nickel is more, uh, the, as I indicated, the, the radial distribution of nickel is more uniform. This may be contributed to the lower reactivity of nickel uh, in, the, in, in hydro treating of, of residual oil. And the, and, and the case for the medium, the deeper penetration and more even distribution of, of the radium in the HDM can be attributed to the large pores. The catalyst A, which causes larger pore, so the medium can be distributed uniformly. And the ratio of diffusion rate to reaction rate is, is much higher in the disease. Uh, we have also tried to get some information about the carbon distribution. Uh, that's the distribution of carbon dioxide on the catalyst where more even throughout the interior of the pellet. Copies usually formed from the feed molecules like racking, condensation, and polymerization. Reaction which occur in the catalyst surface. Uh, with regard to the sulfur distribution, they are quite different from that of vanadium and nickel. Sulfur in the catalyst is present mainly as nickel sulfide, but it is also partially associated with the form. Some of uh, highlighting some major conclusions. The results of the present work clearly indicate that the catalyst type has a strong influence on the deactivation on hydro treating of weight atmospheric residue. Catalyst C or catalyst uh, HDS, HDN, had a high hydrogenation activity which led to a high saturated oak with aromaticity even lower than of the aspartame oak precursors. During the initial phase of deactivation, all the three tested catalysts disregarding of their specific field of application, and they are in process accumulating about 2% of, of, uh, of carbon within the 120 hours time on street. Two types of cops, uh, soft and refractory were deposited in the catalyst, and the HDM catalyst showed a nearly uniform distribution with regard to the vanadium, uh, while it was different in the case of nickel. Uh, the catalyst HDS, HDN, uh, suffers higher losses in the surface area as well as uh, pore size uh, volume, comparing to other two catalysts. Uh, I just want to indicate here that. Uh, that this program is an ongoing program. We are currently trying to elucidate and investigate further uh, aspects related to ARDS, trying to see different feedstock, trying to see different catalyst system, and this will continue, and uh, efforts will be also continue with regard to heavier crudes that I mentioned in the early beginning, that we're going to produce a heavy crude as, as 12, 13 API, so this is also we're going to be used maybe in wet refineries in the future. So this, this type of work will continue. Uh, by this, I reach a final end and I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research and Japan Operation Center of Petroleum uh, the, as a funding agency. And the fund from Japan come from MITI. MITI is Ministry of Industry Trade Center. And also I would like to thank Japan Energy Center for being a technical partner. Uh, thanks for AMDC for the thorough discussion and trying to implement the type of work that we are doing as R&D in the commercial unit. And also I would like to thank Wade Foundation for advancement of science, for giving me this opportunity and funding my mission coming to Canada. And thank you very much. Thanks also for the uh, organizing committee and to giving us this opportunity. Appreciate it for thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll have a paper from uh, the, the same company uh, after the coffee break. So.